So just over this place, we are leaving our moku and we're going into somebody else's. So that's why we're going to test from here to go out. We're going to give our hookupu to the ocean to take whatever. But this is where Napali Hula'ana starts. From here, all the way back. So Napali, where we're going, they're called, the whole name is Napali Hulaana, which are places across the cliff that you have to swim across, that the path is through water. So that's this part. The central part is um, Kialahula. The next part is Ho'ohila. Everybody say Ho'ohila. Ho'ohila. That place is named after a mo'o called Kavahine Ho'ohila. Kavahine Ho'ohila she is one of the few mo'o that escaped Hi'iaka. So who here doesn't know Hi'iaka in Pele, that mo'olelo? So Hi'iaka is the youngest sister of Pele. She comes to Kauai to come and get Lohiau down in Haena. On her way, she runs into all these mo'o and, and um, goes over there by Pu'upo'a, Karhanayateku, all the way around uh, Mahamoku, Hanalei Bay. They go around and she has to fight all these demons. She comes to Lumahai to Kione o Ho'ohila, and Ho'ohila, she's a very vain mo'o, she's full of herself, she loves herself, she thinks she's the most prettiest thing in the world, and the only way that people can pass without her attacking them is by somebody, everybody saying, oh, you're so pretty, Ho'ohila, your scales shimmer like diamonds, in the, not diamonds, but you know, they shimmer so pretty in the sun, all that, and so one day, Hiyaka comes down, and she just asks, she goes, oh, can I please pass by your area, will you let me through? And she's, Ho'ohila is like, who the heck is this lady just coming over here and asking to go through without, so she just ignores her. Hiyaka chants again, she ignores her again. Hiyaka finally chants a Oli Kuamuamu, which is a Oli that says, you know, you're so, you're vain, worthless, you may be pretty on the outside, but your inside is all full of crap. So that's what she says, and Ho'ohila gets angry. So Ho'ohila doesn't know that that's Hiyaka, she just thinks it's some lady that's trying to take her place. So Ho'ihila attacks her. So Ho'ihila is attacking, 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 but Hiyaka is just batting her, her um, attacks away like nothing. And so finally Ho'ihila realizes that, Holy, oh my goodness, she's going to beat me up. She's going to kill me and I'll, and I'll, you know, it'll, it'll be over for me. So Ho'ihila grabs a whole bunch of sand. Last minute she's like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Last ditch effort, she throws all her power into one final attack, throws sand in Hiyaka's eyes, and runs up the Lumahai River and escapes. So Hiyaka just lets her go and she moves on with her journey. So in ancient Hawaii, the belief system was that when you when you hala, when you pass on, your spirit goes to this place called your Lena Kauhane. And if you're a good Hawaiian and you prayed to your family gods or you malama your family, you made sure that you had a good name. Your kupuna would come, pick you up from the lane, and you would jump off into Po and be in the afterlife and be all happy, happy, joy, joy. If you didn't, you would be stuck in what is called the alcueva. And that alcueva means to wander aimlessly, to just go and wander about. So in the alcueva, your spirit would just sit there and wander back and forth, trying to chase moths and missing them because you're so hungry. So that's the Hawaiian's view of hell. Hawaiian view of hell, you have no food. That's it. 
It wasn't anything else. You have a beautiful beach front. You get shade anything, but you cannot eat or drink. That is Hawaiian hell. You no can eat. Yes, that's why we love our food. So you come over here and so there's a story that's out there that we have to kill as soon as possible about the Barking Sands. Okay, this is not the Barking Sands, it's the Kione Kaniya Onohili. The reason why they make the sound in Hawaiian history is because when Hi'iaka, so when we're going to talk about her, we're going to go rewind the, the cassette tape and go backwards from the beginning, I mean from the end. She came this side and she saw all the spirits over here in the Alcueva and she was like, Spirit, get the heck away from me. They are trying to get true. And they started to attack her. And so she was, you know, she was trying to be nice. Hiyaka was always trying to be nice. When they are trying to attack her, trying to attack her. And finally she's like, you know, I'm fed up with this. She swung her pa'u, called lightning bolts, and turned all of the ghosts into ash. And so that's, that sound of crickling, crackling when you step on the sand, because they're so hot, that crying sound is actually what the Hawaiians a tribute to the spirits crying out from Hi'iaka killing them. So that is what is about there. There's also a heiau on that side for Kanaloa, for the ocean is one of the few that's here. There's certain pule that are still surviving that are for that um, place specifically. <laughs> Makoiki and Alapii. So these are the three points that make up Nualolokai. When you go around Alapii, that, that, um, it's a quick, it's a cool That's that cliff before you get onto Nualolo Aina. And then the stream in Nualolo Aina is called Nualolo. And Nualolo means many, many, many heads. So, you know, people have conjectured that Nualolo is probably. Um, related to all the taro that they had so much because it was one of the most abundant valleys even though it was so small in Napali that it, because it had so many heads of kalo that it was called the Alolo Olo, Olo Olo, Olo Olo, Olo in Honopu. This Honopu is, situ- is split up into three parts. There's Honopu Vayaloha, Honopu Vaitanaka, which is this side, and then you have the other side which is Honopu Vayakua. So those are the three ones and in the chant that Kaui was just chanting, Okalala upalia ala ho iela ea ke a ko ia ela e kavahine la ea that's when she comes over because she leaves Lohiao in the in the canoe with Wahine Omao. So she goes, you guys go on the ocean way. I'm gonna go through the pali because all the pali is are her ohana. So she goes through Kalalau. She goes and talks about how beautiful Kalalau is. Sees Honopu and starts chanting and saying Honopu, you know, really beautiful Honopu. The other side is Vayakua. So it, Akua is not godly. It's sometimes used in Hawaiian to mean magical. So that's the the magic of it. That water that just appears. So it's it's like this. It captures these pali capture the vai from the sky and bring it down to us. But Napali was under Nihau because Nihau didn't have any mass of fresh water. They would trade with Napali. And so it became that the genealogies of Nihau and Napali are close to even Haena. But because Haena and Hanalei had Hukiuki, there's always um, travel, that's where it stops. So Haena, Napali, and Nihau are really closely related. 
And because of the swell and stuff and the winds going that way, that's why Niho and Napali would always have that interaction. There was this Hawaiian family, they left from Hanalei, came to Napali to stop over provision and they went over to Niihau. On their way to Niihau, their canoe capsized because the current shifted. So they're sitting out there a long time, long time, and then finally they're pulled it. They pull it to their Akua, they're like, please come save us, something, something, something. A shark came and carried the three of them back to Hanalei Bay. And so from that point on, they changed their name to Ka'au Moana. So the Ka'au Moana family, that is how they got their name was from that. They were Kanaka Ka'au Moana, Ka'au Moana. The Ka'au Moana with that shark. So that shark brought them back to Hanalei. And, and so Hawaiians, whenever they say, if you ask somebody, oh, where is so-and-so? And they go, oh, Ai Kalalau. They don't mean they're in Kalalau Valley. They mean that they're wandering in their mind. During the kingdom time, when leprosy started in Hawaii, this is where they sent the lepers, because it was an isolated area, they could control it. But then after a while, since it got to become a big epidemic, they started to send them all to Kalawa, which is on the Molokai. The only, so they went to go look for everybody, and there's one leper called Kalui Ko'olau, who's from Haena. He ran away and hid inside it, so there's that song, what song, that English song? Um, oh. I shot the sheriff, but I didn't shoot the deputy, kind that one. Uh, yeah, yeah Kaloi Ko'olau shot the sheriff, but he didn't shoot the deputy. Yeah, he was in here. The sheriff tried to come and take him, him and um, his wife, Pi'ilani. And so Pi'ilani, she never had leprosy. When they came out and Ko'olau died, she wrote a book. So there's a book called Kaloi Ko'olau. Um, the Mo'olelo Hekanikau na Pi'ilani. So his wife wrote a lament for what they had to go through. So. So all these types of water that shoots off into the ocean are called Waiku Ahoy because you would do that action that's kind of related to Kalena Kawila is that she stays in the cave up in Kalena Kawila and she calls, she you know, chants all that stuff, prays him back to life and to re um, solidify his spirit within the body, she calls to Kane um, so the lightning god. So she calls to him, calls to him, and he sends a lightning bolt, and it comes and it shocks him back to life. <laughs> yeah, AED, boom, boom, boom. Same. Ancient Hawaii, we knew. We knew about the AED. Yeah, so that's Kalena Kawila, that pali right there. The straight one? Yeah, this straight one right here. Yeah. So that's the pali that he um, uh, fought Kilioi and Kalana Mainu'u on. So Kilioi, the mo'o, that po'ak right there is Kilioi. Kilioi Kapua. And then we're in Ke'e in Haena. So this is Ke'e. And then Kiahualaka is just that little section right there. This Kiahualaka. That's why you would, the trail is, you know that the trail is an ancient trail. Because in ancient Hawaii, you would never walk above the Apua. So you would always go around. So that trail, you know, the, again, oh, it's an ancient trail. It's not ancient. The, the ancient is, you know, in the 1800s. That's that's the, that's as ancient as it is because the Akua would never have anybody go and walk about and you know let erosion happen and fall into the godly area. So that's Kahualaka and then the rest, this whole entire part of Ke is um, part of the hail, Kaulua Paoa. So the hail because of its it, it has strict guidelines. You cannot just come and walk into this area. You have um, self-sustaining community. So that's why the Haena area, they have everything that can sustain itself. It has the fish ponds, it has the lo'i, it has everything that needs to sustain the hail because this was an area of study, of of excellence in hula, genealogy, mo'olelo. That's what this whole place was dedicated to. This was the college. This was the Harvard of ancient Hawaii, right down here. You even have them in mo'olelo on other islands that say, you know, in order to graduate from Hula, they would be offering a whole mass of people to over here just to graduate and learn because we were the best. It's like Kamaile, same thing, but it's not as famous as Kamaile. Kamaile is the fam most famous in Mo'olelo. Makana is now because the songs are more pretty. <laughs> you, you have catchy tunes like Kapoli Lawa e Ka'ua Aloha and all those kinds of things. So yes, yeah, so that's Makana and then we're going to go over to Limahuli. Ooh, I 
This is where, so imagine all the trees gone. You're in Ali'i, you're sitting on your canoe out here, waiting for the Oahi to come from Makana for you to catch and burn yourself right out here in this, this ocean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That burn is called Ipoahi, to scar yourself with that, you know, to show how much you love somebody. That's the crazy Hawaiian, you know, that's, that's what they used to do. They used, Kauai, we would burn ourselves, Kau, they would scrape their hand on a rock. Maui, they go grab this sap that's acidy and they burn themselves, you know, it's all that kind, just for love. So, that is makana. Makana is all about aloha and if you, you would also burn yourself to say that you've seen it. You've seen the oahi o makana, that you've seen the fireworks. So, Uncle Moku, how many, three or four, uh, three years ago, he did it again. It slowly, every time he does it, he slowly gets it to come closer and closer to the ocean. But remember before, there was none of these trees that's blocking the way. None of those um, invasive stuff on top of the pali to change the way the wind blows. Because of its concave um, shape, the wind blows different there and it spins the oahi to come all the way out here to be caught. Holo, holo. Holo, holo. Holo, holo. Ele 